It's okay, going cool. Live, and you can click share right now so your people can see all about right. you from my point of view. How do I? I don't know how to do that. Let me um, see. So maybe I can go, go on my. You go to my Facebook or my Instagram and just click share. Oh, yeah. let me go on my let me go on my iPad and do that because I'm using my phone right now as my my streaming. And you can do it later if you want. It's whatever you want to do. We'll do it right now. We'll get the live, you know, get the live comments and everything. Oh, cool. Oh, you got the flappers background right now? Look at that. There you go. Yeah, I know it. When, you know, I come from the day where flappers was a dancer, but whatever. <laughs> now it's a comedy club. You're like, you're like, that dress on the wall is mine. I don't know what they're <laughs> talking about. <laughs> that's awesome i was like oh you want me to do comedy i thought you want me to dance <laughs> yeah <laughs> let me find All you right. on let me find the facebook right now uh bop, 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 bop. let me look you up real quick so we're live right now this is just live baby yeah. look at this we're just it's okay because you know nobody really cares if anything's perfect anymore that's what the pandemic did there we are i'm gonna love it and i'm gonna share it Thank you, Mike. Thanks. You're my sure best interview of a thousand and ten. Oh, you nobody's ever <laughs> done this. A thousand and ten? Yes, nobody's stopped everything to go, wow. whoa, wait a minute, let me promote this. <laughs> no, you know what's never. you know what's great though is that I'm happy that I'm thousand I feel happy to be thousand and ten. I always want to be thousand and ten. <laughs> thousand and ten. God bless you. That's a lot of podcasts. Damn. Do you know how many of them I'd like to redo? A thousand and nine. A thousand and ten. We'll just redo this one too right away. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. So wait, you've been to Flappers? Do you live? Oh, I'm sorry, you can ask me questions. No, you, you, go, you go. No, you go ahead. I'm all no, game. No, no, you do. You go. You go. No, you. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what you want to know about Flappers. Well, I seen your flappers. I, I, because we just met back on Wednesday at Wise Guys in Vegas, baby. I um, knew, I knew, but, I knew when I saw you. I just knew that you were no schlub, that you were somebody, and I wanted to hear <laughs> your story. And I'm like, at Wise Guys, you can kind of get lost in the crowd. And I'm like, yeah. oh, wait a minute, he is somebody that should be like up there for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, not three. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I felt like, yeah, I, I, that three minutes is so quick too, you know, which is what my last girlfriend said to me, but it's, uh, it's also that three minutes is like, yeah, I, I didn't know there's no light at the, at the, you have to like look over at the clock. So it's like, I was like, Oh, I still got 40 seconds. And then it's like, all right, thanks. You're done. I was like, all right, cool, I'm good. All right. You know, but I yeah. appreciate that. Thank you. So I had the flappers thing on, I need to change it. I got yeah. into the Flappers Festival, like in, I don't know, 2019. And oh, the Burbank Festival. A, huh? The Burbank Festival. I've done it like seven years in a row. It's the best. Oh, and they had yeah. the nerve, the nerve to tell me I couldn't come without the shots. And I'm deadly allergic to the shots. I'm not an anti that. I'm not a criminal. I'm not... <laughs> You did rob that guy at Wise Guys that night, though. I don't know about a criminal. You did ro you robbed that guy at gunpoint when we were in the parking lot. So I don't know. <laughs> Let's do your intro, Mike. This is going to be I love fun. It. This is a long one, you guys. Just bear with me. Okay. Mike per Perkins, originally from the beautiful state of New Jersey, Mike Perkins is a comedian and producer that features and MCs all around the country at clubs like the world famous Hollywood Improv, Comedy Works Denver, and Helium Comedy Club. He has had the opportunity to open work with comedians like Ahmed Ahmed, Whitney Cummings, and Melissa Villasenor. Oh my gosh, I have to oh, yell. Yeah. To name just a few. Mike has also been featured in many comedy festivals, festivals most notably winning best of the fest at the burbank comedy festival and a semi-finalist in the boston comedy festival do you know what we're talking about here folks that ain't <laughs> easy he also hosts and produces his own live late night comedy talk show called another late show 
tonight, where he writes and performs brand new monologues, sketches, videos, and interviews with touring heading, headlining comedians and musicians from TV and all around the country. He's in competition with me. You guys, I got to go. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> That's my time. Thanks. Thanks, Linda. Thanks so much. You're the best. <laughs> it's been said it's the best damn live late night talk show you've ever been to with Mike, that lovable East Coast guy, bringing that positive energy and heart to the show, just like he does every time he hits the stage. I almost had my teeth fly out of my mouth during this <laughs> intro. Welcome, Mike Perkins, you guys. Woo! Woo! Linda, thanks for having me. Thank you thanks. for reading that, too. That's a... that's. That's the bio, baby. <laughs> I know. You know, I don't like to go spy on people to find out tidbits about your life. And I don't uh -huh. like to read the intro because I want to be in the moment and I'm lazy. So yeah. it works. <laughs> so it's it. really cool to see like all the stuff that you've done. And when I was listening to, when I was looking at your bio intro, I mean, I was blown away by the people you've been on stage with. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I've been doing comedy almost 10 years too. So it's like you, you run into a lot of people. Ahmed Ahmed is, he's one of my best friends. I've been on tour with him for about a year now. He's been taking me on the road. It's kind of like, you know, next level, my comedy career, you know, I've been going to comedy works, Denver. We just did New York back in October. We're going back soon. And you know, it's just, uh, you know, we did Toronto. I became international, uh, doing that Toronto show. So it was, um, I owe a lot to Ahmed Ahmed too. So, um, yeah. Also, my buddy Brian McDaniel. I know he's uh, he's not. Uh, I put. I he's he's one of the best. One of my best friends. He took me on the road the very first time I got to do that and go back to Jersey and stuff. So that was like uh, four years ago or so. So um, I, I I owe a lot to the people that have taken me on the road with them and stuff. So yes, um, absolutely. I got a message from Howard over at Flappers. Well, he's in L.A. He says yeah. he's one of your best friends, and I invited him to come on here and help interview you, but. He's busy tonight. Howard Aronin. Oh, he's the best. I love Howard Aronin. That's what's funny because he was he actually told me uh, he mentioned your name. And I was like, how do you know each other? Like, it's such a small world of like, that's why when I seen the Flappers thing, I was like, wait, you've been to Flappers? Like, you know, it's crazy how like because you're based in Vegas, right? Yes. You live in Vegas. Yeah. Do you just come, do you come down to L.A. and do shows on occasion and stuff? Or? I'm going to be well, I'm starting to hit the road because after doing all these interviews, not to brag on your time. A thousand and ten. Thank you so much. Yeah. If you could go over name, name your favorite guest. <laughs> yeah. And um, love the one you're with. Isn't that how it goes? And so <laughs> <laughs> tell that tell that to my ex. All right. <laughs> After, um, you know, I started in SoCal and mm -hmm. Kevin Davis, the Marina comedy, I told him I'm a veteran of the army and I want to do comedy for the military. And Kevin you are Davis, a veteran? God bless you. Thank you. Yeah. That's awesome. I was a cashier and I'm Jewish, so it was not a far stretch. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so uh, Kevin Davis hooked me up with Will Mort and Yvonne Morton at AmelianLaughs.org that uh -huh. go to military places and that's the day like a month into my comedy i meet howard no way that's amazing howard's one of the best guys in the world he, he really is the nicest guy and he's so talented too he does you know he does poetry he does comedy he just you know he does it all he, he's he's the best the he's, done, he's, done, he's done he's done he's done my talk show a bunch yeah um, yeah I, I love him i yeah. love him he's not single though is he He's not, no, but you know, not my age either. <laughs> Life is You're so trying. rough when you Whoa, get Whoa, let's get him on the phone. Let's get him on. A, <laughs> hold on. We got a we got a taker, Howard. Hold on. <laughs> He's a doll. He's just a doll. He's one of those guys that I think every girl just like, oh, if he was only single. Yeah. Yeah. He's the best. Yeah. And those eyes yeah. of his. He has the prettiest eyes. We just talk about Howard the next 10 minutes. I'm like, and those and those glutes. I mean, he really works out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> so that's oh amazing that you do the the military uh bases and stuff that's incredible yeah that's really I, great uh, i love i love doing comedy for the military and veterans and i've gone around to different military installations and walked in and said okay where are they at i gotta make them laugh and 
Yeah. Sometimes I almost got arrested. Because <laughs> I'm persistent. What? You can't tell me no. <laughs> no, they need to laugh. Where are they? I don't think you understand. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. They're like, Miss, you need clearance. You're like, I am clearance, you know, and you just walk through like, all right, hold on. You're like, it's fine. I served. And it's like, well, you're about to serve some time. <laughs> just get out of it. <laughs> Miss, get in the car. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> so you grew, what city did you grow up in? So I no, grew up. Uh, no segue. I'm uh, a who needs segues. You know what I mean? Uh, just barge right into the military base, just barge right into the conversation. You know, that's what I always say. Uh, I grew up right outside. I grew up in South Jersey, like 10 minutes from Philly. So I grew up in, you know, that kind of area. Um, and, uh, yeah, I grew up there my whole, my whole life till I was like 27. And then I moved to, moved to LA and to pursue the, the comedy dream. So I've always been like an East coast guy. Um, my whole life went to college out there and stuff. Um, and then, yeah, that's where I, I that's where I grew up. So. So, like, how old were you when you decided to go on stage and do stand up? Uh, so I did, I did stand up for the first time when I was 24. Uh, I did it my first time ever was, uh, it was an open mic, but it was an open mic for bands. Um, and I didn't realize that <laughs> when my buddy was like, we should sign up. And, uh, so we signed up and like, I had to follow like a heavy metal band that went up and then like, as they were cleaning up, I went up and was like, Hey guys, I'm Mike Perkins. Thanks. Uh, you know, just, uh, I did good. I did. Okay. Um, and then I did it maybe a couple of times after that, but then I kind of just stopped for a couple of years. I would just like show everyone. I was my, like, you know, that's my story. I always tell I'm like, I would just like, I didn't open mic once. And then I like, showed everyone that tape for about a year and a half. I'm like, I did stand up before. Look at me, you know? <laughs> um, but when I moved to, so it was like 2010 when I first started doing stand up. But it wasn't consistent until 2014 when I knew I was going to move to L.A. Like a couple months before that, I was like, let me try to get back and open mics. And then when I moved out here, I just hit the ground running. So I tell everyone that I started in L.A. for the most part because I didn't really. My first show ever was at Flappers um, on Fourth of July weekend uh, was the first time. So um, that was, was the first show I ever did. military show? <laughs> it wasn't, but I did wear my USO outfit. So um <laughs> <laughs> I have made it a military done, show. Have you done USO tours? No, I never did anything military. That's that's <laughs> amazing. I, I would love to do that. Yeah. I, I would I hope the troops on, like me. I got booked on two military AFE shows and both of them didn't happen. Ah, oh, what's an AF what's AFE mean? Armed Forces Entertainment. It's like USO. They're oh, like, gotcha. See, that's well, why they haven't booked me. I don't happens. even I don't even know what the what the initials mean. <laughs> <laughs> They're like alien and farm. I'm like, no, no, Ali, AFE. You know, if you hear if you hear crying, it's my dog. My dog's here because oh, he's a little how cute. He's a little guy. He has to sit oh. on the chair with me because if I put him down, he's gonna cry, bark, and run around. And then, oh. so it's not me crying. It's him. If you hear crying on the microphone, <laughs> so does the dog? Does your what's your dog's name? His name is Bugsy. Bugsy, Bugsy. Hi, hi, Bugsy. Does he help you get chicks? <laughs> he does. Yeah, I just bring him to dog parks. And I'm like, his mom just left us. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> He's a babe magnet. <laughs> yeah. They're like, get away from me. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a single dad. They're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> He's a good guy. But he does yeah. the whole the whole Zoom. Like when we were doing comedy on Zoom in the pandemic and stuff, he ruined every one of my Zoom shows. <sighs> Which is like, I, that's why I kind of have headphones on with it. Because like, if he hears somebody else talking, he's like, what's going on? What's happening? You know, like, all right. And that's where I made the mistake. Because one time they're like, they're coming up next, give it up for Mike Perkins. Everyone starts clapping and he starts barking. And I'm like, yeah, he's cheering me on. But then he would not stop barking the entire set. And I'm like, he's behind me. <laughs> what's happening? But I've been holding him the whole time. Like a baby. Where are the single ladies at? He's, I'm holding my child. So you've. You've done comedy, not just with Ahmed, Ahmed on the road, but uh, mm. one of my favorites. Well, two of my, I love female comics that are strong examples of how to, how to do comedy. Melissa Villasenor, we know her from Saturday Night Live, right? Oh, she's, she's so amazing. Yeah, she's the best. And Whitney Cummings, I mean, it doesn't get better than 
well, there's others that are at that level, but yeah, you know, there that's the top echelon of female working comics. Oh yeah, Whitney's one of the she's like the queen of comic pretty much. I mean, she's you know, specials, movies, she produces, I mean I mean, everything, you know, TV shows. Uh two broke girls. She was the mind behind two broker. Like she's the best. And her podcast is amazing too. Good for you. The good for you podcast. I, I love two broke girls. I love yeah. that comedy writing, such tight material. Yeah. Um and Whitney's well the best. Like well well developed characters. Yeah. And that's all, I mean, that's all Whitney's like, you know, I mean, she has, there's a team of writers and stuff, obviously too, but you know, that's just kind of having those comedy chops of knowing like, you know, relationships and everything else like that. Um, <laughs> my, my dog's crying. Cause he's like, yes, I know Whitney's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so talk to us about your specific journey. It's two parts here growing okay. up at home, your role in your family, how you were at, in school. Paint us a picture who you were growing up at home and in school, and then take us through your journey in comedy. I'll let you talk. Uh, so growing up, I was always, um, I was, uh, I'm the oldest of two. Um, I have a younger brother. Um, my, and then my mom and dad, my mom and dad were always really funny too. Actually, the reason I was in Vegas was because they were celebrating their 40th anniversary uh, on that, um, that Tuesday before I met you on the, the mic on Wednesday. Um, we went to Flamingo and they renewed their vows and it was a, it was a nice, uh, it was a really nice, it was a really nice weekend all together, the family together. Fabulous. Um, great to have a good, stable family. I don't have yeah. that. <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> it's funny. That's I get awesome. that. I get that a lot where people are like, you're like, your parents are still together. I'm like, yeah. You know, like, they're like, why are you doing comedy? I'm like, cause I'm fucking funny. And I've been my entire life. Can I please have that? You know? Um, <laughs> But I've always been the class clown. Like, I've always been that guy in school that just, like, was cracking jokes. And, like, you know, Adam Sandler is one of my heroes. And, you know, that's just, like, watching his movies and just, like, you know, doing the penguin, penguin from, like, Billy Madison stuff. Like, when I was in, like, fifth grade. And, like, you know, I've always been, you know. And my my parents, I, I, I give that to my parents, too, because they've always been a fan of comedy. Like, I remember watching, like, The Wedding Singer with my, you know, my mom and grandma for the first time, um, which is one of the best romantic comedies of all time. Uh, if I'm going to say number one romantic comedy of all time, wedding singer, it's a perfect movie, uh, yeah. of just like comedy, you know, there's drama in there, bro. It's, just, it's everything. That's why Bugsy's crying right now. Cause we're going to watch it afterwards. He's like, we should watch it. You know, I want to grow old with you kind of thing. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, um, my, my parents always got me, like my parents got me into comedy, I guess too, from just like watching SNL and my, you know, my mom would always watch like, you know, Jay Leno and, Tonight Show and Conan, you know, all that stuff. And my dad, like, introducing me to Chris Farley, you know, like Tommy Boy movies and stuff. Um, but, yeah, I've always been the class clown and always wanted to do that. So after high school, I kind of went into acting, like, for college and stuff and film because I knew I wanted to do that. Um, I always wanted to do comedy movies, so I never knew, like, I would do stand-up. And then, um, you know, when I moved out here, I knew I wanted to do... I wanted to do stand up too. Uh, so like that was my journey of like, I was supposed to move to LA so many times and I just kept like getting sidetracked, like, you know, with work and like got to save up money, you know, or like I had a friend that wanted to go with me, but then they bailed on me and I was like, all right, I'll wait another two years or whatever, you know? So, um, but finally made the move. And that's when I came out here in 2014 and kind of hit the ground running with stand up. And I just fell in love with stand up, but I didn't really want to do that. I wanted to do movies, but you know, I, and I, I went, I did UCB. I did, um, the Upright Citizens Brigade. I did the whole um, improv, you know, program for that, and still do improv all the time. Um, so I kind of fell in tell. love with that. So. I can tell you were showing your improv skills right at the very get go on this. Oh yeah. Oh oh, this or yeah. Thank you. Um, just yeah, you, you gotta be in the moment, baby. You know, just gotta <laughs> be in the moment with it. Um, <laughs> improv really helps your stand up, like for sure. Uh, you know, it helps your, it helps your riff that you're just, you know, you just, just let anything happen. I mean, whether you're on like a, you know, a crazy, awesome packed out house of a show, or like you're in a show with like five people in the audience, you got to do your <laughs> crowd. It's all improv, you know, cause you know, that's what it is. Um, but, uh, yeah, I did that. And then that's, that was my comedy journey. And then I just kept doing it for, you know, it takes years for you to get like, you know, to network yourself and, 
you know, to kind of look back, you're like, wow, I moved out to LA knowing one person. Um, I moved out here with my brother. Um, and then, you know, my one friend that I knew from high school was out here too. But then you look at it now and you just made so many connections and networks and you just kind of like do all this. And now you're doing these shows and, you know, just like, cool. Now I have a commercial agent and you're like, whoa, I have that. You know, it's just like, that's the, that's the whole journey of it, baby. And it just keeps on, you keep rolling with the punches and keep on going and good stuff happens, you know? So. Got it. Yeah. And then one time you roll into a wise guys, you do an open mic and you meet Linda Marcus Smith, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> and, here, the same. <laughs> and here we are. And you never think that you're going to be guest number 1010, but you know what? That's what <laughs> happens in life, baby. You know, <laughs> Show me something else of value that's at number 1,010. I don't think you can. <laughs> exactly. You know, come on. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad that you mentioned Adam Sandler because I'm a huge mm. fan of his. And sometimes he gets a bad rap because, I don't know, chick flicks or the parodies he's done or whatever. And I just think I, I, I grew up long before him, but I, I grew up in my comedy around his influence, you know? I, yeah. I, I love him. I love the, the song about the Hanukkah song. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I grew up, I was half Jewish. Well, I still am half Jewish, half Christian. And it's uh -huh. like, you know, I'm so sick and tired of all the Christmas songs and nothing current for, a you know, in a major key. It's all minor. <laughs> so yeah. <depressing. laughs> That was the first happy song I ever heard, you know, from yeah. in the Jewish world. And I thought, oh, yeah, this guy's got it going on. Oh, yeah, he's the best. I mean, he did that and, you know, just he I, he did that first on SNL, I believe. That was like his, you know, that was the Hanukkah song. And then he had like different different versions of it, too, like later on, you know. Yeah. Um, Jew, and like Jew, not a Jew. That was his thing. <laughs> yeah. Sammy Davis Jr. Still not a Jew. <laughs> like whatever. Yeah, <laughs> it's the best. I can't tell you growing up Jewish, half even half Jewish, that's a game we always played at our house. My dad would always say, not a Jew or Jew. Or, <laughs> and it's so, so who was Jewish? Was, you, was your dad Jewish or mom Jewish? My dad was Jewish and my mother's father was Jewish. Gotcha. So, you know, the Jews don't really accept me as Jewish if they're hardliners, but I don't care. I've suffered for my faith. <laughs> You're like, I'm half Jewish, but only the good half. Come on. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. But um, so like you went and did, you got to go on the road with Ahmed. Ahmed, who else mm -hmm. is like taking you on the road? Others? Uh, so, most yeah, one of my one of my best friends, Brian McDaniel, he's the first one that ever took me on the road with him. Um, And I met him. He was one of the first headliners I met at Flappers that, was so incredible with improv and his standups. Great. And he was one of these guys. And I love doing that now too, is like, he gets to the show right on time, you know, like 20 minutes before, and he sits and watches every single comedian. And then he'll go up and improv and like bring callbacks back to like, you know, like, you know, Oh, Linda's got that, that nice yellow scarf on, you know, like, and uh, what, uh, like, and he's like, he's just one of those cool guys that like that I look up to. And I mean, he's become one of my best friends. We were just, we just hung out on Thursday and had got some nice Italian sandwiches, you know, mm -hmm. got a nice hoagie. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and he does my talk show every month. He's, he's been a, you know, a nice guy of that. He does the sports segment. He's a big sports guy. Um, but yeah, he was one of the first guys that, that, um, was really nice to me as a headliner and then just would like hang out after the show and stuff. So, and then, um, and then back like 2017, 2018, maybe was the first time he, he's like, Hey, I'm going back to the East coast. You want to feature for me? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. And we went back and it was like a Philly and Atlantic city hometown show. And it was incredible. Like he's the first one that made like com your comedy career. Everybody's comedy career you always like level up. And it's like, you start doing this and then, Hey, maybe you start doing 10 minutes and you start doing 15 minutes. But it's like, you get those notches in your belt. That's like, Hey, I just went on the road. That's a level up, you know, and he's the first one that gave me that next level stuff of like coming back to LA with confidence of being like, I can do this, you know, back home. Like I do it somewhere else. Like, and he's the best. He's so, so supportive of me. And, you know, he's one of my best friends. Uh, and uh, I'm going to get emotional right now and just start crying. <laughs> just like, 
Is he watching? I hope he's watching right now on Facebook. <laughs> Brian, if you are, comment. Can we see the comments? <laughs> Brian, are you here? Brian, who's watching? Who's watching right now? Can we see who's watching? I'm going to see who's watching. Let's see. Yeah, tell me who's watching. I always forget to look. <laughs> Let's see, because I shared it. Let's on see. my end, uh, probably nobody, because, you know, I don't have Sinbad on. Let's see. I wish I was Sinbad. <laughs> oh, I don't know. My oh, now it's is now watching. it's live. yeah. Oh, it's just me watching. It's me watching us. <laughs> that's, that's great. I love it. Oh wait, now my it's people, my people like to come on after the fact, like uh, voyeurs. Oh, love it. Yeah, they don't want to be part. They don't want to watch it. We don't want to comment. Wait, how do I get out of this? Now I'm hearing everything I'm saying. <laughs> wait. Okay, there we go. It was like doing double. <laughs> Jeez. It's like Linda, you're the best, and then it said Linda, you're the best. <laughs> Love it. Um, but yeah, I, I did the row with him and then um, and then Ahmed. Those are the two I've done the road with, um, you know, like the legit like, hey, let's travel together, airplane, everything. You know, it's it's the best. So do you have any um, funny story like there's weird, hard, stupid or scary? And uh -huh. do you have anything from the, those four pillars to tell us about in your comedy career so far without naming without throwing people under the bus, but scenarios that you'll never forget. Um, we, what did you say? Weird, hard, and what else? Weird, hard, stupid, uh -huh. or scary. Stupid or scary. Um, that's what I'm looking for in a woman, by the way, is weird, <laughs> hard, stupid, and scary. <laughs> but not stupid. Be smart. You know, no, I'm not saying stupid, but that's, that's my Tinder match. Um, weird. I don't know. I, there's, there's a lot that's, happened uh i'll tell i'll tell you one while you think how's that okay okay great okay. love it so i'm doing this mic i'm at in portland oregon at a club and uh -huh. the whole length of the bar is like a goldfish bowl to the outside where the homeless are hanging out uh -huh. so while you stand with your back to the homeless and people that are watching you are watching the homeless because they're that's more already, That's already weird. I love it. <laughs> so add to that that the host was on the spectrum and not really um, like his social cues might have been a little off because of it. Uh -huh. You know, I'm just saying. Yeah. So you've got these homeless people that are starting to fight with each other. So instead of like, you know, ignoring it or whatever, he takes and he bangs on the window at them and starts egging them on to fight. And so they come in to beat us up, not him, all of us. So they're coming in and they've broken beer bottles and now their beer bottles are broken weapons. And they're we had to call the cops because of oh my our God. host <laughs> that's on the spectrum. <laughs> What the fuck? Holy shit. That's the last oh time God. you know. It. <laughs> yeah, it better be. <laughs> Damn. They're like he was actually back the next night with like a stab wound in his neck from the beer bottle. The beer bottle was still sticking out of his neck, but he's like, Your next comedian coming up is gonna take me to the hospital because I'm bleeding out right now. Oh my God. It's not Why bad can't... enough that you have all this competition going on behind you and he has yeah. to egg it on. Oh my God. How much time did the homeless guy do on stage? <laughs> he got he's like, I just... out of it. <laughs> he, st he stabs the host. And he's like, I'm the host now. <laughs> it's like, whoa, if you could do that, I could be, I'd be hosting a long time ago. If you could have stabbed to get a hosting spot. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy if I, had known that, I wasted all this time doing my sets i should have just come and stabbed him <laughs> yeah right <laughs> who needs uh, yeah who needs who needs a right when you can just stab yeah just stab your way to the top <laughs> god damn I'm gonna take oh my a god stab at comedy yeah hey take a yeah take, yeah go take a stab <laughs> at it not literally but if you want to get ahead you have to <laughs> oh my god that's insane i don't have a story like that it's insane <laughs> I did, um, I'll tell you a Vegas story because my first time in Vegas that I was supposed to do a show because Wise Guys was like my first time ever on stage in Vegas. Um, but I was supposed to do it back in October and I went out with my girlfriend and we were supposed to, um, well, I, you know, Butch Bradley? Yeah, I love Butch Bradley. 
He's awesome. He's so cool. My, my buddy, Steve, one of my best friends in comedy, Steve Rinaldi, we started together back in Philly. Um, and we're still, we've been best friends since 2010, you know, for years, 12 years, whatever it was. Um, but he reached out to Butch and was like, Hey, my buddy, Mike's going to be in town on Thursday and stuff. And, uh, and he's like, okay, cool. And he didn't say I was going to do a guest spot, but I was like, yeah, I just want, I just want to come see the club. Cause he does stratosphere, um, you know, Thursday through Sunday, whatever. Um, so then my buddy Steve hit me up again and was like, Hey man, I'll give you this backstory of, of it too. Um, so my buddy hit me up and he was like, Hey man, I told Brett Ernst and he's like, Brett Ernst is doing a uh, Wednesday night. I told him you're going to stop by Strat and just check it out. And I was like, okay, cool. So like I went there with my girlfriend and, uh, and Strat, I mean, Strat's the club, LA comedy club is amazing. It's, it's so, there were so many people, it was so, such a cool club and they were real nice to us and gave us a table and whatnot. And um, what I seen at the show was it was just it was just a host and it was just on Wednesday night. It was just a host and then it was just Brett. And I was like, oh, OK, they don't really do like guest spots or anything. Right. So I got to meet Brett afterwards. We got to hang out. I was like, oh, I'm friends with Steve. And he worked with a med years ago. And like, you know, we just connected a lot. And he's like, oh, next time you're in Vegas, you know, talking. We were hanging out a little bit and it was really cool. So the next night was Thursday when I was supposed to go to Strat to see Butch. Right. So I messaged Butch maybe like 3 p.m. I was like, hey, looking forward to seeing you tonight, blah, blah. And he left me on red like every other girl that I DM um, <laughs> on, on, on Instagram. Um, so we went out and met up with my other friends uh, to get tacos at like seven o'clock. Right. So we went and got tacos. And then my girlfriend was like, oh, we got to go meet up with my friend Georgie and her boyfriend for dinner. And I'm like, we're having like two dinners right now. So we went to the place. Um, it's this nice Italian place in the art district. It's a little small, like apartment looking place. Chicago something. I don't know. Anyway, we went there and so we went and got, I had like two tacos when I went with my friends. Right. And then we went and had this like Italian, big Italian dinner with like veal and like, you know, just like shrimp and like all this stuff, you know? So I'm like, uh, I'm pretty loaded because I had just, I just had two dinners. So we have to go to the strat at 10 o'clock and I didn't really have any time to go to the bathroom. So, <laughs> Get it. so, so uh, we got the strat like right at 10 o'clock. Like we left the we left the restaurant, got the strat and we get inside. want to check in and stuff before the show starts because it starts right at 10. So my girlfriend goes and she goes to the bathroom and, I, and I'm like, you know, I just, uh, you know, I'm just waiting there. And then Butch walks in. I never met Butch before. And I had to say something to him because I was like, hey, Butch, I'm friends with Steve. You know, he wanted to introduce us. And he's like, oh, yeah. Hell yeah, man. Nice to meet you. Atlantic City. I'm South Jersey guy. So we were connected on that. Talked for a couple minutes. So my girlfriend comes back, which would have been my time to go to the bathroom. Uh, but, but I'm talking to Butch, and Butch is like, hey, how long have you been doing comedy? And I was like, oh, about like nine years. And he's like, oh, come with me. I'm going to give you a guest spot. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So he brings me in the green room, and uh, I'm in the green room, and I'm talking to him for like a minute. And then he introduced me to the host. And I was like, oh, nice to meet you. And I was like, hey, do I have time to go to the bathroom? Because right now I'm getting like that. I'm getting that nervousness. But like I also like I already had to take a really big shit. So... <laughs> so I was like, hey, do I have time to run to the bathroom? Uh, and he's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, he's like, you should be, I mean, be quick, but you should have time. Like there's someone else going to do a spot and then the host is going to do some time and then they'll bring you up. And I said, okay, cool. So I run to the bathroom and, you know, I'm just, I'm rushing. So I'm like fucking sweating and I'm just, I'm in the bathroom. I'll leave out the details of that. But, uh, you know, but then I run back in the lobby and I'm all like sweaty, just like try, ready, you know? And Butch is like, and I see Butch in the lobby and he's like, hey, uh, you missed your spot. And I was like, what's that? And he's like, and I was like, yeah, okay. And he's like, I'm not kidding. Kid, you missed your spot. <laughs> and I was like, are you fucking with me? And he's like, nah, they called your name and you were nowhere to be found. So <laughs> you missed your spot. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> so my girlfriend runs out of the double doors and she's like, what the hell just happened? She's like, why are you so sweaty? <laughs> and I was like, I had to take a shit. <laughs> I, was like, I, had, I had to go. So, so apparently they called my name and was like, all right, this next guy coming up, he's a Philly guy. Give it up for Mike Perkins. All right, give it up for Mike Perkins. All right, guess Mike isn't here. <laughs> so we're going to move on. I was like, what the fuck? So Rachel, so Rachel, my girlfriend, she's like, uh, she's like, did you say something bad to these guys? I was like, no, I was in the bathroom. I didn't say anything bad. And Butch was like, hey, this is a hilarious story for your comedy career. And I was like, because you didn't, you didn't miss your spot because you were late. You missed your spot because you were taking a shit. So then later on, the manager and stuff, like we were like, you're like, they were all breaking my balls about it and was like, uh, hey, good shit up there. And I was like, yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks so much. 
And then like, so when I said, when I said bye to the guy, Drew, the manager, I was like, I was like, Hey, thanks for being so nice to us, man. And like, you know, I can't wait to come back. He's like, yeah, just do me a favor. Next time you come back, you take a shit before you're about to go on stage. And I said, you got it. <laughs> and then Butch is like, dude, next time you come back, let me know, you know, I'll get you up. But yeah, make sure you take a shit before you get on stage. So my Vegas, my Las Vegas debut, baby. I, I literally shit to bed. I shit. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I missed it because I was in the bathroom. So that's my. When my they were show. calling you up on stage two or three times, you know what it reminded me of in the movie, The Sound of Music. Uh huh. And the Von Trapp family singers have just won the festival and they're calling them on stage and they're not there. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. And the only music I heard was in the bathroom lobby. That's what I heard. <laughs> that was the sound of music that I heard. <laughs> it's funny. I wish they heard them. That's why I need to make a joke of it. Because I need to like make it seem like if I heard like them calling my name over the the speakers in the bathroom too and i'm just like oh oh no way no, no what's going on you know like what the hell here i thought the la comedy club was really a cool club but you can't do your set from the bathroom Look, let's let's look at <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly i should have zoomed in you know <laughs> <laughs> oh that's so funny so yeah. tell us tell us what you want to accomplish before you get old like me I'm going to be seven. I thought I was turning 73 this month. I'm only turning 72 because I don't know how math works. <laughs> God bless you. 72 and doing stand up. Yeah. Love it. How, what, do you, what do you want to do? You know, like I've been doing comedy nine years with a brain injury. So my trajectory has been slow and it's mostly mm -hmm. with the desire to make military and veterans laugh that's my passion inside a comedy what what are you trying to what legacy are you trying to leave the world i love that uh i think that's i you you know going off of what you just said you need to focus on what you do want in comedy you know because if you're just like yeah i'll do whatever you know like you know whatever happens happens you know but you really have to have a fo like you want to do military you want to do that focus on that and i think um well i want to do i want to do movies i know that i want to be the next Adam Sandler, but I want to be the first Mike Perkins um, kind of thing, making movies with my friends and just kind of having fun and doing that. But I think for stand up, like uh, my talk show that I do once, a, I do it once a month. I mean, that's become such like my baby. And like, that's what I love to like. I write new monologue jokes and stuff. And like, I would love to write for the Tonight Show, but I also would love to have my own talk show, like streaming and do, you know, on like, you know, a network or ne whatever, streaming service, whatever. It's like, have that be like a thing that is on every night of the week and have a team of writers myself and like all of that with my best friends. Like the, the talk show I do, it's, I'm the host. And then I have my best friend, uh, my partner in crime, Paul Brodo. He's like my Higgins. He's my my side guy. And he's, he's the one who helps produce it. And he does the bits with us and when we do games and stuff. And, and I have a house band too, which is my best friend's, the show with Adam and Sean. So like to have that, that's my, that's what I want out of that is to have me and my friends just, just, just doing great things together. I think that's what I want. And, you know, make it, you know, comedy is a community. Um, put that on a t-shirt, huh? Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but it is, um, you know, you come up together and that's what, that's what I want. I want to just have, and that's what you're constantly building is a nice network of people that you can trust and, you know, care about and support each other. And that's what I want to do. I want to do my own talk show and have my friends on, you know, and just do that and just, you know, just keep going and doing good things. You know, that's what I, I want to do. That's my focus. Back in time, only about 15 or 20 years ago, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> surprise, you thought I was going to the fifties, but no, um, <laughs> About 15, 20 years ago, there was this little kid, I don't know, 15 years old, 12 or 15, and from Valparaiso, Indiana, and at his parents' house in the basement or the kitchen, he put up curtains, and he, he became kind of famous for having a talk show, and talk shows had him come on. No way. Yeah, it was really cool. I haven't heard hi. I don't even know yeah. where he's at anymore, his name or yeah. nothing. But he was now really he's locked in a basement. Someone help him. <laughs> <laughs> Parents probably kept all his money and he's gonna be on TAMZ yeah. soon. <laughs> yeah.
affected. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But no, that was pretty cool. Like, you know, if, if that kid could do it when he's 14 or 15, just there's there, there's no stopping how far you can go. Because, well, there was stopping how far he went, obviously. But, you know, maybe his parents pulled the plug on it or he, you know, he, <laughs> yeah. he just told his parents off one too many times. Screw you. I got a talk show. Who are you? It's- it's just he turned 18 they kicked him out of the house so he didn't have a basement to film in anymore <laughs> that's all it was <laughs> he's still doing it somewhere in a fucking holiday inn or something but he's like i don't know my parents well I, you know i'm in a studio with three other people so they won't let me do my talk show anymore damn <laughs> i love that so where do you have shows coming up and where do you want, where can we help you by getting people, all these two or three people on my YouTube, they're going to watch this. <laughs> where can they follow you? I know they're dying to let me tell them what to do. Well, listen, Amanda, John, and Steve, thanks for watching. If it's just the three people. Um, and also Howard, you better be watching this. Um, I always tell everyone, I mean, I do shows all over. Like I got a couple shows this week. Um, and you know, I'm going back. I'm going to Texas with a med at the end of March. And then we're going back to Jer- we're going we're doing like San Diego, like the beginning of April. But I always just say go to my if you're watching this on YouTube, look up Perk Productions underscore Mike Perkins comedy and watch my talk show and come to it live. Um, another late show tonight dot eventbrite dot com to get tickets um, or just go to my website, the Mike Perkins dot com. Um, and my talk shows every single month. It's a live Late night talk show, baby. Uh, musical guests and characters, and I do a monologue and stand. You know, it's a stand up. It's it's that's I tell everyone to do that. That's my monthly show. That's my baby, and come see that. So, um, oh, did I just lose you? Oh, uh, am I yeah, back? Just for, it froze for a second, oh, but we're back. Awesome, just what like city- my comedy career. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> what city do you do your live show? Does it go from city to city wherever you're at? Uh, no, I do want to take it on the road though. I think that would be amazing. I got to figure out how to, you know, the logistics of that, um, and who can like help us book it and whatnot. But right now it's in North Hollywood. It's in at this place called loft ensemble theater, um, in North Hollywood. And it's once a month. Our next one's March 23rd. Um, if you want to come to that, uh, yeah, it's in LA. I'm based in LA. So all my shows are pretty much in LA. Um, so yeah, I would, I want to take it on the road though. I've been We've been in the works for it. You know, it's in the, it's in the, we're heating it up. You know, right now it's defrosting, I guess. Is that a, that's a weird segue. I don't know, whatever, you know, it's defrosting. Right now we need a micro, we need to microwave the talk show a little bit is what we got to (laughs) do. You said that you'd done New York and that you're going to go back to New York. I'll be in New York, um, April 4th till May 7th. When will you be in New York? Oh, love it. Um, we're going to be back shit i think i'm just missing you because we're doing we're doing philly first we're doing helium helium comedy club on may 10th i think it is let me look that up uh may 10th at 8 p.m uh we're doing helium so we're doing the stand on may 11th yeah i'm just gonna miss you um i already miss you so much i just seen you on wednesday but i missed you this entire time i know it's only been a couple days I, I went to Helium in Philly because I lived in Philly for like six months. And I went, okay. to, I went to the mic and I was sitting with this gal and she was like outspoken. And she goes to the bathroom and she comes back and sits down. And Mike's going on, right? And uh-huh. she says, I just had it out with somebody in the bathroom. And I'm like, I don't know what that means, you know? Uh-huh. Like, tell me. And so she says that... um she was talking crap about somebody that was in the bathroom and that person heard her and all she saw was the lady's purse was hot pink. So then they call the gal I'm talking to, they call her name. She goes up on stage and starts talking smack about what just happened (laughs) unplanned and the Uh ladies in the audience going wanting to beat her up. That's Philly, baby. That's Philly, it. baby. I thought you were gonna say. I thought you were gonna say she robbed the pink purse. <laughs> so I thought you were gonna say, and she see this hot pink purse, and there was a wallet inside, and she just took her money. 
<laughs> talk about awkward. You know, it's like, Damn. oh no, I have to go back to Portland where they just have homeless people bounce in with broken beer bottles to kill us. Oh my God, that's insane. That is an insane story. But also like, why are you doing, like, why is it like right at the window where the where the stage is, you know? Well, I guess it's fine, but like, put like a curtain behind it. <laughs> Totally. There's something. It's such a goldfish ball, you know? You know it was yeah. Nothing, nothing but a window for as yeah. far as you could see. It was so stupid. But anyway. Yeah. Anyway, wow. been a doll to come on. But here's the, the kicker. Uh -huh. This is the end of our time. But I want Already? To, uh, yeah. I want you to close it out by either saying anything you want to say to up and coming comedians from your experience or to people who go to comedy shows and come away not really liking what's been said or not enjoying mm -hmm. themselves or how to avoid that anything you want to say about the business to either group of people um i think the one way to avoid going to a bad show is if you don't come to mine and that's a bad show i mean if you come Come to my show and it'll be an amazing show. Um, well, I think, uh, well, for up and coming comedians, let's start at the top. So uh, up and coming comedians, what I always tell everyone is just keep doing it, um, which is like, you know, that's the advice that I also got. But it is true. Like you level up. You got to set goals for yourself. You know, um, I heard Dane Cook talking one time about it, whether it was like on a documentary or a podcast or something was saying like he always gave himself like like a challenge every year that he was doing stand up. He's like this year I'm not going to move around a lot. I'm only going to stick to the microphone and maybe do like a couple act outs or something, you know, or whatever, give yourself challenges, but like reevaluate yourself every year too. Like I've been doing it almost 10 years and it's like I felt like every year, like I said like when Brian first took me on the road with him, that was a level up. You know, now what what do I do to level up again? You know, just it's all longevity. Just stick with it and you're going to bomb, which is still, it gets to a point where it's funny. Like you bomb, you know, like it, at first you're like, what is happening? Like I'm the kid in Philly where like I bombed and then I didn't do it for another year. And I just showed everyone like I did stand up, but like really what I should have did to get to the point where like, that's hilarious. I bombed, you know, like, like I just bomb, you know, you just bomb, you bomb everywhere, you bomb everywhere and you do good everywhere, but that's the, that's the process of it. So like, you just got to keep getting on stage and keep, pushing yourself to get better and also surround yourself, put this on a t-shirt, surround yourself with amazing people. Um, cause you, people push each other, you know, like find a nice team of people cause stand up is hard to do alone, but you start to make friends and you start to like do stuff together. But like, you know, like Linda, if I know you for a couple years, then it's like, I'm going to tell you like, you know what, Linda, don't do that joke. Or like, maybe you should try this. Or like, we get to know each other. We're like, where we're honest with each other. Or like, Linda, you have to keep going on about that military. St you know, like, what, like you kind of help each other with that. So like, I think that's the longevity of it is find people that actually care about you and stick with them and fucking rise together. You know, um, the uh, that's the advice that I have. You know, just stick with it. Um, and don't talk about your fucking dick on stage so much for guys. <laughs> Because there was a lot of that at Wise Guys. Um, a lot. A lot. <laughs> that one guy on Wise Guys, he did this joke, though, because he was bombing for the whole three minutes. But he had this one joke where he's like, I, I've been telling it the past couple of days because it was so funny. I was like, this guy just went on stage. He said, he's like, I sleep with a weight. I don't know if you remember it. He's like, I sleep with a weighted blanket. If you consider my blanket being filled with semen. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? It was so <laughs> insane. But it was such a, but if he writes like that, write more like that. Don't do the other stuff. Like he bombed the rest, but that was like a really funny joke. But it's like, find what your strong, your strengths are and keep, this is just for this guy today. <laughs> I hope he's watching. <laughs> but like, find what your strengths are too and follow it. Like I love hosting. So when I started hosting my talk show, I mean, it was like, you know, it was just keep, I mean, that's my strong suit keep going with it, be better, get right better, you know, just keep longevity of it. Um, as for people that like get upset at comedy shows, um, what do you mean? Like cancel culture type stuff like that? Or, or like, you know, a confession, me personally, mm -hmm. I come from the school of thought that 
you don't make jokes about another group of people. Make fun of yeah. your own, you know? Like, but I get it, you know? But like- Oh, that, yeah. Some people get up there and they just talk dirt about every other race. And then it just sounds racist. Yeah. They're, they're actually, that, that's not their race. So what do you say, like, it, it, that, you know, like, I've had people go up on stage and say, um, I hate the Jews, you know? Uh-huh. First of all, it's not a joke. Second of all, yeah. you're not Jewish, you know? And, and I yeah. that's where I'm like, Eh, you know like first of all kanye what are you doing at wise guys kanye (laughs) what are you doing you know it's what you're saying yeah well i think with that too like i mean this stems with people going to clubs but also comedians too is like just stick to what you know like why are you just saying that to get a shock laugh then it's it's not authentic be authentic to yourself because all what everyone's trying to find is their own voice you know like you just said you 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 want to focus on military and you're a veteran that's amazing that you're a veteran so connect to that community and also like stick to your authentic truth of that and then your voice is now that and you become something like that but like people that just go up and be like <laughs> it's probably because you know they're uh you know they're italian you know or like whatever like you know i i've always learned too and what i when i started in comedy is like if you make it personal authentic to yourself no one can ever steal you steal your material first of all so like like i've worked at casinos all my life and i'm an east coast guy and like all this stuff like if i see someone doing jokes like that i'm like he just took my joke i'm the one that does that but it's also like just stick to yourself why are you trying to get a shock value joke that doesn't mean anything if it doesn't mean anything to you then you shouldn't be saying it you know if it's just a throwaway joke then like why are you doing that? And also, if you're doing that, you're not going to get booked. You know, like, what are you doing? Like, people that have been doing comedy for like three months think like, oh, it's going to be shock value joke. It's like, yeah, cool. You're going to last another three months. <laughs> and then you're going to fucking quit because nothing's working for you. But it's because you're not working for yourself. Put that on a T-shirt, huh? I love that. You know, yeah. I'll tell you what is the weirdest thing I've heard in comedy is that the deeper you dig into yourself, you know, mm-hmm. like um, open up who you really are and be authentic, the more relatable you are. It exactly. seems like the more you go into talking about yourself, the more narcissistic and the less relatable you're going to be because you're only talking about yourself. But the opposite is true. Yeah. And that makes I mean, people audiences know. They know if you're being authentic or if the, you're telling the truth. You know what I mean? If, you know, if I went up and was like, man, I am so jacked. I'm like the rock. They're going to be like, this guy is delusional, you know? But like, if I'm like, I only signed up for Planet Fitness to get the Tootsie Rolls and my girlfriend made me, it's more authentic, you know? And it's true <laughs> because those Tootsie <laughs> Rolls are great. Uh, but yeah, I think it's, but then also too, like you get to, if you're talking about yourself, you won't have to worry about like, memorizing you know your bits but also like if you already know what the story is and you i mean you have to exaggerate a little bit to make it more stand-up story but um but you already know about it so like you're already authentic on stage if you're talking about yourself if you're talking about your grandma if you're talking about your brother or whatever like you know them more than anyone make it relatable because if i talk about my brother somebody else has the same type of guy you know that that's what's relatable of it so it's like don't don't just do a joke because it's like a joke. Do a joke because it means something to you and it's going to mean something else to the crowd. That blows you know, my mind, but it's true. I've seen it yeah. work. And what I learned in improv too um, from UCB, like mm-hmm. there's a lot of, like even when you're doing improv, like if you do like a tag or something or like whatever you go and do a scene but and do like a reference, but it works for stand-up too is like if you just do like a broad joke, like if you're like... uh you know, I I don't know, Jewish people, am I right? You know, or like whatever. And then like a hundred people just like, ha ha, you know? But if you do a joke that you're like, man, my dog Bugsy, he just loves to piss and shit everywhere, but then still does it with a smile. And maybe out of those hundred people, 10 people are hysterically laughing. That's what you want. Because then those 10 people are going to come back. And they're going to tell their friends. And that 10 turns to 20. The 20 turns to 40. It's just exponential goes. And that's like, because you're being true to yourself, 
So like, that's where you start to build your set, you build your audience and you don't want to just get the spray laughter. Like it's a sitcom, nothing against sitcoms. Sitcoms are great. But what I'm saying is you don't want the spray stuff. You want, you want to focus in on yourself and also be relatable, you know? So. Um, Absolutely. I yeah. love that. Yeah. So you've been inspired and you told us how you grew up. You told us who all you've traveled with in comedy and, your story about Whitney Cummings and Melissa Villasenor, who I adore. Love them, Fox. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who I adore. <laughs> it's and funny when she got when she got SNL. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. That should be on a t-shirt. Melissa Villasenor, who I adore. <laughs> who I adore. We'll send it to her. She'll get a t-shirt for it. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, you've been a doll to come on here at late at night. You probably had a long day. And uh, I just so appreciate your coming on. Thank you so much. Thank you. Much. No, thank I don't you for know having me. I'm this supposed was... to look in the camera. <laughs> I, don't, I haven't got there. There's a hole up there. And I, I feel this, stupid. this. I have my ring light, so I'm being looking at you like next to my phone. So if I'm looking down, it's like I'm looking. I'm, I'm looking right in your eyes right now. So you know, <laughs> eyes up no here. Light. Eyes up here, Linda. All right, eyes up here. <laughs> Hold on. Even Bugsy's like eyes up here. Hold on. Bugsy. He's getting Bye, antsy. Bugsy. Oh. Say hi, Bug. Say hi, Buggy. He's the cutest <laughs> dog I've seen on here. He's happy to be guest number one thousand eleven. So he's <laughs> he's here. He's here. We had a we had a double here, Buggy. But he's a quiet dog. I don't hear him barking at all. Oh, I've been I've been petting him like Mister Burns the entire time. <laughs> just <laughs> he's been crying. I'm hitting his head. Just I've been squeezing him the entire time. Just. Just like I had a quiet. beagle. I had a black beagle for 15 years and called oh, him Murphy because of Murphy's Law. He was always in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> That's Good, great. That dog. Oh my gosh. I but, love it. Yeah. I love little dogs like that. Oh, they're the best. Yeah. He's a Shih Tzu Bichon. So he's a little guy. You know, nice. I love it. Well, I wish you all the best. And now that you've graduated from the school of Sinbad, <laughs> who am i you're welcome <laughs> to come back anytime and plug anything you have going even if you want to come and plug something somebody mm -hmm. else is doing you can always hit me up to come on and plug something for five or ten minutes always. thank you so much this was so fun thank you for having me this was really great and it was so amazing to meet you too it was really cool like you know just yeah. to meet you that that's you know and you know so be no happy to friends yeah yeah i was so happy yeah. that howard said that he loves you and that you're like best buds and i was like oh <laughs> cool all right <laughs> well i'll let you go yeah. but i'm old and i'm alone except for the picture of marilyn monroe on the wall so oh I there you go i love it time. i thought you that was you on the wall me. what are you talking about is that a picture of you i thought Marilyn I'm Monroe. off the wall, but not she's on the wall. <laughs> I Googled, I Googled what I what Marilyn Monroe would look like if she was lucky enough to still be alive and be my age. And I gotta tell you, I look way hotter. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna say, and then your your website popped up and was like, that's what she's gonna look like. <laughs> Linda Marcus Smith, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Yeah, Google That's Marilyn it. at 72, and then you'll see and what it, I'm talking about. And you pop up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you later. Thank you so much, Mike Perkins. Linda, you thank lot. you so much. I'll see you soon. Okay, see you soon.